Sometimes in life it's necessary to know the bold circle diameter of parts either or pitch circle diameter of parts either for fabrication purposes or parts replacement. In this video I'll show you how to calculate it. In terms of practical application, let me give you a visual example here. I'm going to take you off the tripod. I have some parts here on this desktop here that all feature bold circle diameter or pitch circle diameter. This is a sprocket from the motorcycle's rear wheel that drives the rear wheel and the chain goes around it and connects to the engine. This one here is a gasket material for some plumbing components with four holes. This one is a flange between two flanges, two identical flanges, some gasket material would provide uh, airtight or watertight connection. On this side you have four bolt holes, but if you turn it around you can see this is some student project, not an actual real part. It, it, this is not a pipe or a tube, but you can see this is a flange and it can have eight holes nicely and evenly spaced out. Bicycle components, chain rings from the crank, this is where the pedal goes and yeah, the crank arm goes and the pedal on it. So uh, these also come with four, five, uh, four and five are typical, but sometimes three according to this menu manufacturer here. Uh, the chain ring came in this packaging, so sometimes three is also a possible bolt pattern. And their pitch circle can vary. These numbers are in millimeters. Sometimes for a spare wheel on a car that you want to fit on a vehicle's hub, the hub also has these bolts, lug bolts sticking out from it. It's really important that the pitch circle diameter or bolt circle diameter be matching the wheel exactly. So the, this pitch circle or bolt circle is a circle, and I'm going to work with this shape here, is a circle that goes through the center point of these holes. Okay, and you can kind of, this part here leads the eye, you get it, it's a circle and it needs to be pretty exact in order to fit the part on a vehicle. If you have to fabricate one out of just a scratch and whether you're working with cork, plywood, sheet metal, whatever, uh, you need to lay it out. Your layout needs to start with knowing your pitch circle diameter. If you don't have it, you can calculate it. That's what this video is focusing on. If all you have is one measurement, the measurement between the bolt holes, where the bolt holes line up along a polygon. So whether you have five or three or four, and four of course makes a square, or I have drawn here eight for an octagon or six, whatever number of bolt holes you have, it makes a regular polygon. So if you have a different shape where it's not symmetrical, if you have four uh, holes on the chain ring or and they are not symmetrical, then it's not gonna work. It has to be a a regular polygon inside a circle. In terms of math, this is known as a regular polygon inscribed a circle. So in this video I'll show you two calculations. One is gonna be 15 seconds and it needs a calculator, that's it. And the measurement. The measurement can be taken with a ruler. Uh, this centimeters, millimeters, inches, whatever. This one is in centimeters. And the measurement needs to be taken from bolt hole center to bolt hole center, typically with the spurs of the calipers are a pretty good indicator of this. Of course, trying to line up the center of the, uh, or the spur to line up with the center of the circle is uh, pretty difficult. So go from left side of the hole to left side of the hole or to right side of the hole to right side of the hole thereabouts, something like that, because it's the same as center to center. So that makes sense, I hope. So you need one measurement and one calculation, 15 seconds, you're gonna get your pitch circle diameter or bolt circle diameter. So, let me just put you back on the tripod here, with a little bit of fiddling, there we go. So, On these polygons that I have here, I don't have neither inches or centimeters, nothing, it's just seven. So if you have a measurement from hole to hole, it could be any number, like, like the manufacturer indicates here on the packaging, any of those numbers are popular. 
none of them are really industry standard, but manufacturers tend to choose uh, numbers that are not unique and not custom made, but parts for which would be widely available. So, if you are fabricating, of course, and you have just one measurement, you're going to have a problem if you start with a clean sheet of metal, you put, a f you put a mark on it for the first bolt hole and you grab a center punch and hammer on it, so far so good. If you have a measurement like 15 or I don't know, four and a half inches, whatever, a number, you can lay out the second hole in any direction, but when you lay out the third one, the fourth one and the fifth one, they kind of need to fit on a circle. And for this, let me just put a circle here. Maybe two of them will line up on a circle if you just randomly try to lay out your bolt hole locations. If the only number you have is four and a half inches, for example, for a vehicle's hub. So, you need to know the pitch circle diameter along which you can place, start anywhere. And then go four and a half inches, four and a half inches, whatever number, whatever number. Two, four, five. Ah, okay. There's a sixth one on it. You get the idea. You have to start with the pitch circle diameter if you're fabricating. So I'm going to be working with uh, trigonometry, and uh, just for math's sake, let me just pull you a little further back. This is known as a diameter of a circle, or yeah, that that has a polygon inscribed into it. Let's start with the circle. Well, let's start with the regular polygon pentagon that is inscribed into a circle. The blue line is the diameter and the side length of the polygon here is 20. 20 anything, it doesn't matter. The, and then this 20 is taken by uh, a measurement taken by this vernier caliper or it could be given as a the number on a blueprint, you know, I want five holes evenly spaced 20. That's nice. It still needs a pitch circle diameter or bolt circle diameter. So the blue is the diagonal, sorry, the blue is the diameter of the circle. And you can see that the blue line is about this much longer here. As it goes from one corner that touches the circumference of the circle there, but it's a little longer here uh, as it uh, comes out to the comes out to the circumference. So it needs to be calculated. I put the number 72 out there in this calculation. A pentagon divides a circle into uh, the 360 degrees of the circle into five chunks, each 72. If you find the origin of the circle, the center of the circle, and connect the corners of the polygon, if you have a triangle, of course, you have three lines, three radiuses, three radii to run from the corners. If you have a square, of course, you have the diagonals drawn and that's where the center of the circle is. In this case you have five of these 72 degree slices. I'm going to focus and work with just one of these triangles. The 72 degree can be divided by the diameter into two 36 degree angles. Why would I do that? Because I want a right angle triangle. A right angle triangle can be calculated fairly easily. This blue triangle bisects this original triangle, bisects the angle exactly into two equal halves as well as bisects this line, the side length, which was 20, into two equal chunks, 10 and 10. So we went from uh, uh, one triangle now to two triangles. I'm going to focus on one of these new triangles. On the next slide I have just such. This blue line again is the radius of the circle now because that's where the center of the circle is and it comes all the way out to the circumference but I don't need the entire uh, diameter in this one or radius. What is given here is this 36 degree angle and this side length of the triangle that has a length of 10. In terms of trigonometry, that's an angle. This is a side opposite that angle. 
this is a side that's adjacent to the angle and this is the hypotenuse of the triangle the math takes place here it's either sine, cosine or tangent function that gets it done and of course it's sine function because sine of an angle equals opposite over hypotenuse and then when I replace the words with the actual numbers given I get this and once you solve the equation you get 17.0 one, three for the length of the hypotenuse. All right, what do we do with the 17.013 figure? The 17.013 is there is again this green length of the triangle, which was the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle, but is actually the radius of the circle. I hope this replacement or substitution makes sense, the hypotenuse is the same as radius and if you double the radius, 17, you get diameter 34.026 there's your pitch diameter or bolt circle diameter so, let's review the calculations, how do I compress this into a 10 second calculation we had 10 divided by sine 36 to get radius. We need diameter, so we need to double something. You either, uh, yeah, you either double the radius or you double the number that you divide in order to get diameter in one step. So if you start with 20, 20 divided by sine 36, and it and it works. It's it's just as simple as it looks. 20, 20 divided by sine. 36 equals 34. That's your diameter here. Your pitch circle diameter or bolt circle diameter. Now, uh, for this little bit here, how do I know that it's sine 36? Is the magic number that works for me? Because once you have your measurement, say four and a half inches or whatever, 63 millimeters between bolt hole and bolt hole, whatever number, how do you know sine what do you need? It's fairly straightforward. The pentagon makes five triangles because it has five corners. So it's 360 divided by five divided by two again. So 360 divided by 10 is what the number 36. Uh, that's how the number 36 came about. So by this analogy, if you have a, let's go back to the first slide, a triangle divides the circle into three chunks of 120 degree angles half that is 60 so the calculation for uh, this would be 15 divided by sine 60 if you have four bolt holes the four bolt holes make four uh, 90 degree corner 90 degree uh, triangles out of uh, out of one square when you draw the diagonals on a square so because it has four corners you divide the 360 into eight chunks and of course it's 360 divided by eight your number is of course 45 so uh, you would take the bolt distance divided by sine 45 to get your pitch circle diameter if you have five it's uh, whatever bolt hole divided by sine 36 because 360 divided by 10 five corners times two 10 is 36. If you have 8 bolt holes, you're going to be dividing the circle into 16 parts. So 360 divided by 16 is 22 and a half. So you're going to be calculating with whatever the side length here is. I don't know, 3 in this case, whatever, 3 inches, 3 whatever. So 3 divided by sine 22 and a half gets you your pitch circle diameter in 10 seconds. So that's how the calculation goes. It's a little bit of explanation about it. Thank you very much for watching.